I'm Philip van Immersel from Ghent University, from the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine and the Laboratory of Veterinary Bacteriology. And uh, I'm heading a research group uh, focusing on bacterium host interactions, mainly in animals, poultry mainly, but also uh, calves, uh, pigs, and even humans to some extent. Um, and working for many years already on uh, pathogens, intestinal pathogens, and uh, microbiota in general. We have done multiple studies with many different uh, probiotic strains, also experimental strains. And uh, basically there's quite a difference between different strains, uh, even within the same species or genus. And the reason is not only the, that they differ in genomic content and that they produce different metabolites, but also that some of them maybe do not colonize the gut because it's completely different what you do in vitro and in vivo, for example. Uh, maybe because some of them do not uh, survive the stomach conditions, so there are various reasons why some strains are not colonized and others do. The intestinal flora is uh, important for multiple reasons. First of all, because it's uh, uh, controlling pathogenic infections, it's controlling pathogen uh, colonization in the gut. Secondly, it's important for immune development. Uh, and thirdly, it's also important for uh, digestion of uh, nutrients, feed and food components. Bacterial strains are unique in a way that, well, that even different uh, strains within the same species have totally different characteristics. So they can produce different metabolites, they can produce different antibacterial substances and different types of molecules. So when thinking, for example, about the effects of probiotics, it's really very important to look at individual strains and not just take any probiotic strain. Christian Hansen is a bioscience company founded in 1874. So for 140 years we have worked with microbes uh, and to understand how they work and why they work. Christian Hansen has the world's largest commercially available strain bank. In fact, we have 30,000 strains that are available. And these strains are characterized for different features that has effect on human health and animal health. So this gives us the possibility so, to select the right strain for the right job. When developing new strains, we always start with focusing on our customers' needs and challenges to understand how the strain should look like. Then we go into our strain bank, numbering the 30,000 strains that are characterized, and we look if we have a match of the needs of the customers and the challenges and what the strain's capabilities are. If we do not have a match, then we actually go out in nature and select and isolate new strains to find the right strain for this, for this task. Sometimes we also work with universities to get their strain bank in-house to uh, enlarge our strain bank and to get the right match. Once selected a strain that is showing the required capabilities in the lab, we test the strains and the final product in the animals. So we run production trials where we measure feed conversion, we measure average daily gain, we measure milk yield to see if the product really has an effect on the animal. And we see that. We have several trials showing that our products has good effect on production parameters. <music>